So finally made it to trapping season and I'm getting ready to set some traps and I'm going to try to do a daily trapping video uh, posted every day so you kind of almost like you're running the trap line with me. But So for today I'm getting set up, right? And so I'm going to try to walk you through kind of how I approach the sets, uh, not necessarily the sets themselves so much as just how I pick location. And so first off I've got this this property that's uh, it's part of, it's a big hay field. Um, I've got some other private property behind me that's just kind of some scattered uh, timber various types. Got this big pond that runs probably uh, a couple hundred yards up and I've got a pond dam. Pond dams are fantastic locations for anything from beavers and otters crossing to you know predators and other game crossing the pond dams because I mean it's a if they want to get across they've got to come to the dam or they've got to go around one way or the other so uh, this uh, location right here, I've got some kind of some young pines here. I've got a little uh, washed out area where I know I've seen, I found coyote tracks, coyote scat, and uh, on both sides, kind of a little cleared area. So this is my first location. Typically, I set at least two traps at a location. Most traps I set two, most locations I set two traps. I may bump that one up a little bit. I, this, this looks really good to me, but uh, once I get the trap set, I'll show you what uh you know how i picked out where i set them and and what the trap sets look like so looking at this location here like i said you got kind of left to right it's a it's a pretty large location so i liked it for four sets um i've got one set right around the corner and i'll walk up and show them to you but one set right around the corner in kind of that open dirt spot i've got one set on this kind of thick grass clump right here I've got another set on a grass clump down the uh Dam, and then I've got one set up here in this kind of washed out scraggly area. And what I look for, I just look for something that catches my eye most of the time. Now granted, this set here, there's nothing really that caught my eye except for I like that little burn, that little bank. It's a nice little natural um, backing there. So I just elected, I put a a double punch hole set in. I got a punch hole set right there in the center and a punch hole right there with a little wool covering it. My trap is bedded there. And uh, then I've got a little gland lure or some call lure on a branch up here. Um, moving this way. This big tuft of grass really stood out to me. It's right on the edge of the roadway, but hopefully the set is off just enough that you know somebody can still drive by here and not mess anything. So if you'll look and see right there in the center, I've got a, a pipe there. So this is a pipe dream set. And I used the uh, I used this grass clump as kind of natural um, direction for their foot. So I left this one right here, this small one. you got grass clumps right there. So if he wants to smell it, he's going to have to get right up there in the middle. It could shy some away because it is pretty cramped, um, but hopefully not. And I've got several scents here. So I've got some Hiawatha Valley down the pipe. I've got some uh, Minnesota red kind of on the left hand side and I've got some red fox pea on the right hand side. When I use multiple sets, scents like that, I try to spread them out. That way the coyote don't stick his nose right there and smell everything. He has to move around a little bit. Um, then I threw some feathers on there for some little visual attractant. Moving on over here, and this one doesn't necessarily anything, whoops, sorry, jump out at me about this one. Um, so I've got the trap set right in this little pine tree here. A lot of deer tracks and, and sign going right there. Hopefully I'm off the deer track enough to, to avoid having deer smell it. I didn't put any urine on it. Sometimes urine can seem like it attracts deer. But this is another double punch hole. And I've got my holes. Let's see. I've got my holes spread apart. So I've got one on this side and I've got one on this side. And this is, these are all bedded with kind of the pipe dream method of bedding, so no sifting at all. I dug the hole and uh, spread a little uh, grass clippings over the top of it. Can't really see the trap, but there's nothing covering the trap um, except for those grass clippings. And then down here, I wanted to get kind of down here close to the pond dam, just because I like the, I like the pond dam. Uh, so I got... I set this this set here on this little clump of grass. 
so I don't I don't spend a lot of time analyzing set locations I look real quick I pick out two or three things that I like if I don't find something I'll move something um, but put this pick these locations out put the sets in and go on down the road to put more sets out I don't I don't overanalyze I try not to overanalyze and here again like I said I've got this is kind of a flat set using this grass clump as backing um, I've got some red fox gland on this side I've got a little uh no that's actually bobcat gland I've got some bobcat urine and then I've got a uh, a little beaver caster in the middle just to give it a little mix up the more scent you know hopefully the more attractive it's going to be and then also uh you know that's more time for that animal to spend at the set so one of the things that I like about trapping is you get the opportunity to kind of be creative you know yeah there's the dirt hole set there's your flat set but I mean you can take and mold those to whatever kind of you know whatever fits where you're at or your your location your situation this location here it's the corner of a hay field, and uh, and then it got pines on. So hay, this hay field is on a corner, uh, one quarter, and then the other three quarters, one some thin pines, and the other some kind of thicker, more natural pines. Uh, and so I kind of want to be out in this hay field a little bit, but there's not a whole lot to attract any attention, or or uh, there's nothing that really stands out, and I don't want to be moving rocks or anything like that out here into the hay field. So I found, I just picked out this little patch of cut hay that got left. And I'm going to try to use that as a natural barrier. Um, and I've got a T-bone, so I'm going to hammer a T-bone in on this side and kind of make a makeshift walkthrough. Um, and I'll show you, like I say, uh, my sets here, I'm kind of generally sticking with the, the, the Zagger method of, of bedding them. Uh, I know we've got rain calling for next week, and I want to I want to uh, make sure my sets are operational as much as possible. And truthfully, it, I mean it's it's easy to do, and it uh, you don't really you don't need that much. You know you don't have to have a sifter or a big shovel or anything like that. You need your uh, you need your hammer and your trap, and that's about it. So I dig. I'll dig if you never if you hadn't seen my other video on that I'll dig a, a hole out I'll dig it deeper than it necessarily needs to be but I'll dig it uh, narrower too I'll set my trap I'm gonna take my trap and see how it fits in the hole it shouldn't fit in the hole the hole should be too narrow uh, but the idea is, gotta love trapping in the south when you're sweating and setting traps, but the idea is you use your hammer to create a shelf there that the trap sits on. Then you don't have to worry about uh, sifting dirt over and having having to worry about if you get a rain your your set washes out or anything like that you might you dig it deep enough that hopefully the trap will the the water will pull below the trap I'm using pogo anchors right now uh, these are just what I already I've got some Berkshires I've never really used Berkshires or much of anything else besides pogos um, but I do have some Berkshires and I'm gonna try but these are already attached to my traps and the pogo is just a washer anchor. It's an earth anchor. It's made real simply out of fender washers. I'll drive it in. I try to give my my uh, stake driver a good jerk because sometimes you'll get that washer or whatever whatever stake you're using will get kind of jammed. Um, and then, kind of important when I'm uh. You know, when I get my when I set my trap initially, I don't set it to where it's ready to fire. I leave that dog or leave the pan up high. I don't know if you can see it, but it's up at a high angle. So if I touch it a little bit, it's not going to fire on me. That way, I, I'm not as cautious about working with it. Need to hammer out just a little bit more on the side. It's a little bit tougher in this 
with all this grass around. But you're trying to get that trap bed, just like with anything else, you're trying to get that trap bed solid where that trap, if something steps on one of the jaws, one of the levers, anything other than the pan, that trap does not move. So then I'll, I'll take and I'll hammer around the outside of the trap. I'm not satisfied with that yet. Usually I can judge a little better than this. There we go. All right. And then if you do get your bed a little bit too wide, you can kind of bang on the hammer on the outside edge to try to force that dirt back in on the jaws to kind of lock that trap in place. I'm going to press on several sides of my trap. She's locked in there pretty good. That's all there is. Shoot, I forgot. Well, I forgot my my grass clippings, but I'm in a hay field, right? So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this and use this to cover my trap. That's, a, you know, the whole difference in kind of the zagger method versus the traditional. Now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this hay that I'm trying to use as a barrier. I'm gonna rake it in a little bit. All right, and I'm gonna kind of make a line and I'm gonna put some scent on this side, right inside of it. Then I'm also gonna take my T-bone. I'm gonna come about, that's probably about nine inches from the pan on the other side. The good thing about these T-bones is you can hammer them right in the ground. So it's harder for a coyote to come grab it and run off with it, right? It's also kind of porous, so it'll, it'll, hold, a, it'll hold scent real good. So now, you know, ideally, I've got this barrier right here. I have a scent on this side of the trap. I've got my T-bone, which hopefully will provide a little bit of a barrier. And I'm gonna have some scent on the inside of this. Hopefully, that coyote, he's gonna, he'd probably come around from the back of it. But hopefully he's gonna realize where the scent is and try to walk right in between, try to smell both of them at once, and he's gonna get caught. All right, I'm ready to lure. I'm gonna take this little old punch here and put it on the underside of this little grass clump. Put a little Minnesota red, some red fox gland down there. Red fox gland is pretty well attractive to all predators. Put it right down the hole. I'm gonna take a little sheep's wool just for a little added attractant. Stuff it kind of right in the top lip of the hole and cover it up. Right, sheep's wool has uh, got a scent all of its own, so that's just one more plus. Take some red fox pee, I'm gonna put it right on my uh, T bone here. And then I'm gonna take some of this uh, beaver caster gland. You're just looking for a small stick. And I'm going to smear a little bit of it. And I, I don't know if you can see that or not. I mean, that's a very little. That's like literally Q-tip size, like the tip of a Q-tip. A lure, I do not use much. Q-tip size is the absolute max. Um, I'm going to smear this kind of, see if I can get it stuck and kind of smeared onto the bone there. Um, but lure, it'll, it'll really surprise you. It doesn't take a lot, and it lasts a long time. So I, very, very small. And, you know, with, the, with bait, I'll use more of it. And I'll use, you know, maybe my, the, the tip of my pinky size. Typically, I don't, I don't carry a spoon or Q-tips or anything like that. I'll just try to reach just like I did. Grab a, a small piece of stick, a little dog fennel, some stiff grass, something, and just use whatever I've got on hand to scoop out. So it's hard to get a big glob of of bait, but like I said, I typically don't use that much bait really anyway, but uh, and definitely less less lure. But that's all there is to this set. I'm gonna record, I'm gonna record what I've used 
in my trap line journal. You can get these on CoyoteTrappingSchool.com at our store. Um, but uh, and we'll see tomorrow what we get what we get here. One thing that I do get questions about is gloves and you know using different gloves for setting versus versus luring or baiting. And I don't. I use these gloves. Coincidentally, also available at our website. But I use these gloves, these uh, cloth back rubber palm gloves for everything. Um, and so when I get done luring, uh, I grab me, ideally, I'll grab me some dirt. And so if I don't find any dirt at the next set, I'll try to find some dirt. But I'll just take whatever I can, rub on my gloves to try to clean them off. I've never had any issue, knock on wood, I've never had any issue with that contaminating traps or anything like that. So uh, other than that, you know, people worry about tracks or something like that. I, I really don't get hung up on that either. What I'll do is I'll stand up. I've got a couple of depressions here. And I'll kind of do it right here where the trap is, but then I'll be done. I don't worry about anything else. I just get out of here and, and let the trap do its work. I got a large hay field here that I'm trapping and uh, several hundred acres, right? Um, and so I'm looking for major features on the landscape. Things like this point here. Things like this point here. Only problem here is that wood line is off the property that I'm on, but this piece of fence is on the property that I'm on so just looking at it you know I stopped I feel I know I feel like this is a good location stop and you know this is a little bit higher grass than what's around I mean this hay's crop pretty close so I'm thinking you know this is a natural spot for a set and come and look and lo and behold what do we have here some perfect fresh sign I mean that's I mean that just that just solidifies you know this whole you really I'm trapping for the most part with hard ground for the most part I'm trapping on location and and my idea um, you know how I think the animals are going to move what I think they're going to key on but anytime you can pick up tracks anytime you can pick up scat like that I mean that's just a, a further cements in this is a you know this is where you need to be it, it gives you some confidence that you're thinking like a coyote right in my in my mind anyway one thing I was going to point out is, uh, you know, here's one of my sets here, and I'm going to put three punch holes up here. I've got another set right up here. They're very subtle, and that's that's how I'm setting heavy this year. I'm going to minimize my dirt holes just to experiment and see. I feel like it's it's important to to uh, you know kind of do that experimenting and see and kind of see you know what works and what doesn't um but the one thing that i'm wondering about and give me your give me your feedback and give me your thoughts on it is you know i'm definitely losing some eye appeal going away from the dirt pattern of a of a traditional dirt hole or traditional set where i bed with the dirt um you know i've always set some with the dirt and blended some but definitely less eye appeal in my mind uh, so I, i'm really wondering how that's going to affect my catch so leave a comment below what you think you know is this is this less eye appeal going to have a negative impact on my catch? Is it going to impact more of my, my cat and uh, fox catch that are more eye appeal focused? And as long as I've got good sense, you know, I, I'm still going to going to uh, hang tight on my, my reds and my, my coyotes that are more scent focused. Or what? Well, just something I've been thinking about. Let me know what you think about that idea. I was just over on that corner setting, and I panned down to this corner, um, you know, halfway through this less than halfway through this big old pasture uh, hay field and this looks like a spectacular set location it's right on the uh, right on the edge of this field it's got a, a field corner here there's a kind of a gully that runs off through there and some clear cut on the other side uh, you know kind of an old trash dump like location really wanted to set this set but I just happened to walk over here to the edge and see what looks to be a roadkill deer that the farmer threw off in here getting off the highway. A lot of people would probably think, man, that's that's all the better, you know. The coyotes are for sure going to be in there. Problem is, the coyotes may be in here. Um, and you may or may not have seen my Instagram post, but I posted some pictures of a, a deer carcass and with a trail camera on it and just gobs and gobs of vultures. And that's the thing that we deal with down here in the south is, you know, heck, today is in the in the uh upper 60s i've been sweating you know the fire ants are out moving 
uh, you know, another couple days like this, that deer is going to start getting ripe and those vultures are going to show up. So, you know, setting anywhere in this kind of vicinity, it's it's going to be just as much of a chance of catching a vulture and then you got to release the thing. And that's uh, something I tend to steer clear from. I like this location, but I don't want to run the risk of catching, catching vultures. They are protected. Uh, a lot of people may not know that or realize that, but, you know, I guess they do do a service in cleaning up scavenging, um, so you do have to release them, and last thing I want to be dealing with is trying to turn a vulture loose. So, anyway, just a, just a quick observation. I know a lot of people seem to, a lot of people think that that would make this a better location, and I know in some areas, you know, up north, this, that would make it a great location to have a roadkill or something like that, but in the south, sitting around carcasses is typically not your best scenario, so... So here I'm setting up uh, an otter location, otter or beaver. So I've got a pond, this pond right here, got the head of this pond, right up the hill there's another pond. So we've got a dam between us, textbook location for a crossover set for otters and beavers, right? Um, and then where this, where this pond kind of heads up, there's just a couple little old washes and there's just a, a gully where it's worn out, water's worn it out as well, but where otters and beavers both are just coming through this little old spot. So I'm gonna take, I got a 280 cotton bear because I know and I'm hoping I catch otters more so than beavers. Um, but I'm gonna put a 280, it's gonna fit just perfect in this little channel. Um, and uh, you know, the thing with otters is you gotta have patience. An otter might come through tonight, he might not come through for three weeks. Uh, and, and ideally with otters, you gang set because usually they come through in groups, two to four or more. Uh, so, you know, ideally when you're setting traps for otters, you want multiple sets for otters. So when they do come through, you catch as many of them as possible. I'm going to set this 280 on a, I got a stabilizer here. And uh, like I said, it's going to fit just perfect in, uh, in this spot. I do have run Belial cotton bears, uh, so you definitely always got to be careful when setting cotton bears. But uh, you know the the one the biggest thing that I like about the Belials is their safety is very reliable. You have to move it; it doesn't just flop out of the way like some of the others. I say that's the biggest thing. One of the biggest things I like is if you catch something, whether you catch it by the tail or the neck or wherever you catch it, you got him. So I'm going to run my well, dead gimmick. Let's see if I can finagle this thing on here. You got to remember when you're sitting on these stabilizers, you got to actually set it on the stabilizer. You always want to anchor your kind of bears. You think it's a it's a killer trap. You ain't got to worry about that animal going anywhere. But you don't always get a perfect catch. And even if it is, you know, a, a pretty quick death, that animal's still going to flop a little bit. Uh, so you really want to anchor. Make sure so you don't lose your trap and your catch. So I anchor it on the bottom of the stabilizer, and then I'm going to wedge it right up in here in this little cubby hole. Got my safety zone still. Always being conscious of the kind of bear and not wanting to get caught. Another important thing to remember with cotton bears, be sure to take your safety off. It'll hurt your feelings if you get back and see you missed something because you didn't take your safety off. Here I got a nice little slide coming up the bank. So I'm going to set me a foothold trap. This is a number five B Bridger, laminated. Tip, if you use the number five Bridgers, they come with just a standard nut and bolt either get you ahead of time or go ahead and replace it now replace that nut with a lock nut because if you catch a beaver sooner or later he's going to ring that he's going to unscrew that nut and you're going to try to reset your trap and have no pain i learned that the hard way so Alright, I'm using a drowning rod. Got a one-way slide on it. I take the deep end, 
to the stick it down in the mud really good and solid and I'll take the other end bring it up on the bank make sure I'm not going to set the trap off with my hand make sure I'm leaving myself enough room with my chain to set my trap where I want it that's pretty high up on the bank I'm going to push this baby a little bit out deeper I got plenty of depth but it never hurts to make sure that you got enough of what you need that rebar stake is a 10 foot stake with a one way lock on it a washer just simply a washer welded to the top of it I stake it down with a t-bar at the top like I say number five bridger this is very much of a trap and I try to be particularly careful being that I've got my trap location already nice and ready to go here it's deep enough that I shouldn't have any issues with a beaver bumping it with his chest these bridgers have a little nipple on the dog this one you can't hear it anymore but it's basically a night latch I set it I'm usually gonna set it where the beaver comes across beaver or otter I'll take anything muskrat got a chance of catching a coon here too that's all there is to that now I am going to take me a little bit of beaver caster and I'm just going to make up a little mock caster mound just to get him fired up just throw a couple of handfuls of a couple of handfuls of mud on the bank take a little glob of that caster throw it up there I'm also I got some salmon oil I'm going to give it a shot up the bank just in case the otter comes through he comes through and smells that salmon oil. Hopefully he's going to come check out. And hopefully I'll have one or the other here in the morning. There's my salmon oil. Also stand a good chance of catching a coon with that. But hey, I like to trap, so... Well, I'm losing light out here on the trap line. Got the moon rising. It's a good time to call it a night. But I got uh, 14 predator sets in, 14 coyote sets in, uh, across two farms. And then uh, I got two water sets in, beaver otter sets. Got to come back uh, tomorrow. I know there's some coon sign that I missed and some other beaver and otter sign. So I wanted to kind of get the coyote stuff set up first. So, uh, you know, my style of trapping is I like to catch whatever's available. So, uh, you know, if I'm trapping on a farm and I can trap beavers and otters, then uh, I like to trap beavers and otters because to me, otters are kind of like coyotes. That you know, you never know when you're going to catch them, and it's a, it's a, it's exciting. It's a little bit of a challenge, but it's a extra exciting when you do catch them. So, anyway, like I say, I'm gonna tr I'm gonna be posting a video every day whether I catch a pile of fur or whether I don't catch anything. So uh, follow along and uh, hope you enjoy it. It's going to be real raw and unedited like this. I mean, you know, it's, the, you can't see me, I don't think, other than to my silhouette. Uh, so, uh, like I say, though, trying to get everything uploaded every night is going to be uh, pretty much what you see is what you get. Uh, so if there's anything that you like or don't like or uh, anything that you want to see more of, let me know and I'll try to adjust as I go. And, and uh, like I say, hopefully you get some value out of it and enjoy it. So.